ACA. It's your friend Pekka Karina from the Nashville Predators. Congrats for being honored at the Father Ryan Legacy Gala. Thank you for being a great fan and more importantly, a great teacher. Robert, it's Roman Yossi here from the Nashville Predators. I just want to congratulate you on your award and thank you for all the great work you do with the students. Sorry you had to miss the game tonight. Growing up, my mother and father were both uh, creative people. My mother was an advertising copywriter for a couple of advertising agencies here in Nashville, and my dad was a radio and TV announcer. They encouraged all of us, my brothers and sister and I, to, uh, to be you know, creative. What was I like as a kid? Um, my dad's nickname for me was Rooster, so that starts that off. Um, I probably was... Uh, let me say active. I got in a lot of trouble as a kid. Never broke any laws. It just seemed like they were always saying my name with both the first and the middle name with it. And I always knew I was in trouble. I had fun. I mean, I had fun as a kid, but I stayed in trouble all the time. When I was in high school, my dad was the ring announcer when the wrestling matches were held at the uh, fairgrounds arena. And I had the enviable task of being the, the bell ringer. I would walk out, the bloodthirsty crowd, I'd walk out to ring the bell. And as soon as I walked through the curtain, the, uh, the denizens of the fairgrounds would see me and they'd ring the bell, boy. And uh, it, it, it was exciting. It, it was in college that I learned to love history. It was in, I, the, my very first professor that I had was a guy who I still absolutely adore. Actually, we talked the other night, we still, talk to each other and uh, he he's the one that he turned me I didn't really do ROTC I had it was it was like they they could vote on on girls to be on the field with them to represent them and march with them you know and and for whatever reason I I, I got that so I had my art yeah I had a uniform and an ROTC uniform went on Tuesday and Thursday mornings I'd be out on the field marching with the guys yeah growing up I wanted to be a sports announcer that that's what I thought I was going to be uh, and then I um, thought I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. Summer after my freshman year of college, Monsignor Joe Senior, who was my parish priest at Holy Name, uh, talked to me and he, he made me aware of some things about myself and what I wanted to do with my life that I really had never thought about. So I think because of his influence, uh, I wound up ultimately in teaching. CA and Robert are in my opinion, the heart of this school. They have um, kept the Father Ryan spirit alive and well and modeled it. CA sends out birthday wishes to every person on the faculty and staff regularly. Still, even as adults, helps us feel known and loved. And Robert just um, is always cheering us on, keeping a positive attitude. They really are the models for so many of us. I know for me and, and I would say probably most of the faculty and, and what we aspire to be as teachers. Both my uh, boys have rearranged their schedules to get in their classes. The greatest compliment a teacher can have is to have seniors say, okay, this is the anchor to my schedule, making sure I have Mrs. Williams or making sure that I have Mr. Kent. And then we'll go from there. They're all about the truth. And uh, CA is, uh, her desire to seek it as a historian is insatiable and she goes, uh, she, she goes right for it and she, um, she inspires a desire in us to do the same. Uh, I think with, um, and, and Robert, Robert Kent is able to mine nuggets of truth that you wouldn't even realize were there unless he pulled them out, especially uh, when he applies his humor in class uh, uh, to us and to the text, and he still is this way, but he can find the humorous side of anything, and nothing is exempt. Always smiling, and with the kind of infectious smile that would, would make you think that he just did something mischievous, it was wonderful, or he's planning it. Coach Kent, you never know what you're gonna get with him. Like, Every day in class, it's something completely different. It was Elvis Presley's birthday, and Coach Kent is a huge Elvis Presley fan, so he had us all like go outside. Mind you, it was cold because it was in the middle of January, so we go outside and we stand around this tree, and Coach Kent has like set up a monument to Elvis, and it's like an Elvis candle, an Elvis 
poster, an Elvis cup, like an Elvis mug. So it was just like a whole shrine to Elvis. And he was like, this thing is famous. Like people come from all over the country to see this. And he just went on and on about Elvis. And it was just very interesting to see how passionate he was about it. He does a snow dance, trying to get snow to come. And he has this talisman in his room that's a little blow up alien looking thing. And a couple of weeks ago, he took his class out into the courtyard, hung the talisman on a tree, had them all humming, let it snow, let it snow, and had them all dancing in homage to the talisman so that it would snow. You want to give him room if there is a buffet line. Any type of eating at cross country and track meets, they usually have a hospitality tent for the uh, coaches, and he would usually have at least three sandwiches before uh, we had our first, first race. He's got a reason for doing everything he does. Even when he has a senior slide, it's, it's playing with their heads, I think, a little bit, you know. So you just kind of remind us. So he's doing stuff like that. Even if, even if it's from East Nashville. <laughs> One of those river rats. <laughs> I bug him about that all the time. We're going to, I come from Cal Hall, so it's me calling the, you know. But I always bug him about being from East Nashville. The reality of Mr. Kent is um, remarkable. Uh, you, you, you go in hearing about, hearing about all the stories he has and, and all the antics that he plays with you in the class, uh, but then what you realize is through all the smoke and mirrors as you come out, uh, an absolute better student than you were when you went in. CA is Father Ryan's cog. There's no doubt that every family has to have a cog, and that cog keeps everybody intact from the Elliston Place campus to the current campus to teachers, staff, whoever, here now, to students. She keeps that bloodline flowing. She is an amazing um, person. So Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, that's the best way to describe it. Um, she is really a big time Predators fan. Uh, but yet, when that puck is dropped, that she is screaming at the uh, opposing players. She is screaming at the officials sometimes. She's a better official than they are, although we've only been following hockey since it came to Nashville. Uh, it, it's, some, it's very different. It's a different personality uh, that. But yet, as soon as the uh, period is over, uh, she reverts back to her normal self. She is very much an Alabama fan, and she will you know, whenever they're playing, it's she will wear some kind of jersey of some sort and make it look like it's dressy. And uh, she always has her little Converse tennis shoes on of variety colors. They crack me up. She has, you know, any spirit week we have, she's number one in, uh, you know, dressing up. She'll even bring in costumes for, you know, I've, she's brought in many costumes for myself. If, oh, you need to be at least a bumblebee or something, and I'm like, okay. She's been doing the night projects for as long as I can remember, as long as uh, I've been to school here, at least. And basically, uh, you get divided up into groups. Typically, she picks the groups, and you have to make a night. And she doesn't say it has to be this kind of night, it doesn't have to be this color or whatever. You just have to make it. She wanted us to embrace our creativity because she, she believes that so much of history is just cut and dry, same in, same out, that kind of stuff. But she wanted us to actually take on history ourselves and take our own perspective from it. And making the nights, making our own night, making our own story, uh, we actually we had to write up a story for our night to give them like a, a legacy or something like that. And it was just, it was really cool. Whenever she's talking to us, I mean, she's just always got the smile on her face, light in her eyes, and it's just, it will help, it helps us uh, come into the classroom and just have a better attitude going into a, maybe a tough lesson, she's going to remain enthusiastic and help us to uh, approach it with a better attitude. Uh, what I think she brought to Father Ryan uh, in my time there is she was one of the people who made the school seem less like a school and more like a family. Uh, she cared about everyone, all the students, the whole uh, well, the whole family there. You know, I remember uh, C.A. Williams coming up to me when I was going through a difficult part uh, time and she was really, you know, she comes up to about here on me and she just looked at me and she said, this isn't about you, get it together, and kind of walked off. And you know, it was, uh, it was really 
it snapped me out of it. She actually was our first guard instructor. I don't know if many people knew that, but when I got here, we didn't have a guard instructor, so I needed someone to supervise the girls. And CA actually came with me to band camp, and she would take care of the guard. Uh, and again, that is another person who just engages students. And like she said, you know, she always feels that they're, our, you know, that they're her kids. Um, it takes our new cross country runners usually a few days to get used to Robert's puns. So this is a guy who will do anything for a play on words, um, including the way that he wants to tell the girls to make sure that they stay healthy in all of our practices and our races. So he will often bring a paper like this to practice. Usually it's a little more wrinkled, no offense Robert. Um, and he will say to the girls, okay, I want you to say hi, this is my friend Drake. I need you all to say hi, Drake. And they do, and then they listen to it, and then they catch on. So he, he's asking them to hydrate, but in a way that they're definitely gonna remember. It was all a, a metaphor for life for him. He was teaching us how to, um, basically how to be successful women, and to believe in ourselves, and to believe in each other. And I think that whether we won any, um, <laughs> you know, we won any races, care, he cared so little about. And the year that, well, as a freshman, I think we had, we actually won the region. I think mm -hmm. we came in second in the state. We, we did really well, and he was as excited about that team as later teams that did not as well because basically he really loved us. Yeah. He, not our times, but us. <laughs> and it was fun. Yeah, right. It didn't have anything to do with what our times were. And um, I don't know, we just, we had such a good time. It was always fun. I looked forward to, he would call like in early August and say, hey, we're gonna start running. And you know, a lot of people, like even some of the kids I know that run cross country now, when they get that call, they're like, oh no, we're gonna start practice. We were like, hey, we're gonna start running. I mean, it was so exciting to get everyone back together and everybody was funny and easygoing and we would take off and run up Charlotte. <laughs> Actually now, it probably made people's hair curl to know some of the places we ran. I went to Notre Dame and ran um, cross country and track there and, um, you know, my, I did miss Mr. Kent a lot because my college coach wasn't nearly as supportive as he was and as nearly as encouraging. But um, I feel like I had that background. I knew that, you know, well, if someone believes in me, then I can just stick it out. And that, that first year was really tough, but I do feel like um, just reflecting on such a positive experience that I had at Father Ryan that helped me think, well, it's hard, but Mr. Kent says just keep going and just keep trying and, you know, see where it leads. And so I think once I got over that first hurdle of like that first season, um, then that, you know, after that it wasn't quite so bad. The things about Robert that I've learned over the last 15 years, big thing is that what the kids see of him in class and how he is in class, he's that way all the time. The coaches that really separate themselves are those ones that have that great relationship with their athletes. And that's where I think if I've taken anything from him over the years, it's been the ability to just relate to kids and to you know kind of get to their level which I would say he's always at their level. He was always pushing you to go a little bit further. Um, he, he knew he wanted to get the best out of you and, um, and he did it in such a caring and loving way and um, just very very encouraging. The Alphonse Smith Teacher of the Year Award uh, is an award that is uh, generated by peers, faculty members nominate uh, other faculty members, their colleagues. And uh, CA's uh, uh, nominations, the things that, that her colleagues wrote about her were just remarkable. Um, and all of it was about um, not only the fact that she cares for her students, but that she's there for, for them as well. A colleague has a problem, whether it's uh, in the classroom or uh, even in their personal life. CA is there to to support and 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 care for them. You know, Robert and CA are in the business of, in many ways, like an engineer and architect, but they're in the business of building minds and souls and bridges to people. You know, it's it's uh, the the bridges and things that and buildings and. Uh, they need to be built too, but we also need to have connections to each other. Being able to teach at Father Ryan has enabled me to, to really become uh, 
to the fullest extent, I think, uh, the person that I was intended to be. If I didn't teach at Father Ryan, and I fully mean this, uh, if I didn't teach here, it would be, it would be like I was missing a, a limb or, or part of myself would be missing just because it's enabled me to grow as a person and to do what I really feel like I was intended to do. It is my life. It's my whole life. It's been my whole life. Um, and I'm glad I spent it here. I'm glad I spent it doing what I'm doing. I'm glad I spent it here. I'm glad I spent it with the people that I've spent it with because my best friends, many, many of my best friends that I associate with outside of school, I met here. I met here. And it would, it would, of course, you never know what your life would have, where you would have been if you'd gone down another channel. You don't know, so that's a blind road right there. But I, I know the road that I've been on here. Um, I've made some wonderful friends here. And, and I've, I even sight unseen for glory and fame and something else, I don't think I'd exchange it. I'm very happy with what I've done here.